So we are still in the process of building an equation for how long it takes for a mass to bob up and down on a spring. So going back to the original 11A video, we had a mass bouncing up and down on a string, on a spring, sorry, and it took a certain amount of time and we're building an equation for that and we found out that it's that the time is proportional to the square root of the mass and it is inversely proportional to the square root of the spring constant and what we're going to do is finally we're going to say okay let's take a number um, we said uh, 11.16 seconds that was for that was for 10 bounces so we're going to say uh, 1.116 seconds for one bounce and there's some constant that we don't know times the square root of the mass. The mass is 200 grams. Let's put that as 0.2 kilograms. And the K for the loose spring uh, was 6.5. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get I'm going to do 1.116 times the square root of 6.5 divided by the square root of 0.2 and I'm going to actually add in a little bit of uh, parentheses and I'm going to get 6.36. So I'm going to say that my proportionality constant is 6.36. Now, ultimately, what I wanted it to be, and so once again, there's my quick do it for the camera with sort of not so good materials. And what's ideal, if I did this very, very carefully, I should come out with 6.28, which would be. 2 pi. So finally, the equation, the book equation, is t equals 2 pi square root of m over k. So, in other words, let's just sort of uh, go on to another sheet of paper. And I say, T equals 2 pi square root of m over k and I'm going to say that suppose I put 200 grams or 0.2 kilograms on my stiff spring which was 14.7 newtons per meter what would I expect for a time? And so what I would get for a time would be 2 times pi times uh, the square root of 0.2 divided by 14.7 and I'd get my time would be 0 0.73 seconds. So. I would expect that if I did times 10, I would get 7.3 seconds, and what I actually measured was I measured it at 7.54 seconds. So we're off by a little bit because there's error in a, in a whole bunch of other things, but roughly that's that equation. Okay, so now I want to talk about... Um, T, capital T, is period, which is that's time for one complete cycle. We also have frequency. which is um, is 
the number of cycles per second. So this is, so this one I'm going to say as seconds per cycle and I'm going to say this one is per second and so I'm going to come up with my frequency is 1 over my period and so if I look back up this if the period is uh, 0.73 seconds that means that my frequency is 1 divided by 0.73 seconds and so I just do the inverse of that and I get 1.36 and we're going to 1 over seconds is going to be the units or we're going to take that unit 1 over seconds and we're going to name it after Heinrich Hertz And so we're going to say 1.36 Hz Hertz. So basically what that means is that that thing is going to bob up and down uh, 1.36 times every second. So it'll go through a complete cycle. It'll go through 1.36 cycles every second. Okay. And then the last thing I want to talk about is amplitude. That is um, the maximum um, maximum deviation from equilibrium. And now I, I kind of chose some big words in there because I wanted to relate to more than just um, springs and masses. I wanted to relate to sound waves and other things like that. But basically, so if I've got, you know, if I've got a, a spring and it's got a mass that's there, it's got a mass that's there, so so we're looking at things going up and down so it's going boing boing so it's going speeding up to here slowing down to there so it's going back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth that distance that's my amplitude in this case it's much easier to see if we're in a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about. And in the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about Pendula.